All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Wednesday with Investing Education Academy. I, myself, Brent Simpson, am with Leon Noble today, and we're going to be talking about total value locked. Um, before we go into that, I want to just simply say thank you to everyone who joined Investing Education Academy recently. Um, we had an increase of people joining the Facebook group, which is really cool, but also we had an increase of people listening to the podcast. So our numbers are going up in the podcast pretty steady. So for anybody listening, if you're watching this live, you can go to ieapodcast.com and you can really download us on any of the listeners that you use, um, Stitcher, uh, Google um, Podcasts, Apple, iTunes, Apple, well, iTunes would be Apple. And yeah. then you also have um, our Heart Radio. So it's a big population of people listen to our Heart Radio and Amazon Podcast. So there, you can pretty much, if you go to iapodcast.com, you'll find all of our platforms and you can just choose whichever one you, it's easiest for you to um, take with you. So everybody, again, thank you so much for listening. Thank you for tuning in. And right now, for those of you who probably have never heard of Total Value Lot, it's probably a good time to share this with somebody in your network and then Leon's going to explain why we picked this topic while I do a little bit of housekeeping. Yeah, so Total Value Lock. And th so this is just uh, start off. This is good with cryptocurrencies and not with stocks. So um, so we, as most of us know that are investing in the stock market, um, and especially people that are in the IA world, you know, we're, we're big proponents of doing your own research, right? Everything we talk about on here uh, is informational purposes only, um, but you still got to do your own research. We hope you check this information and actually look into a deeper um, what we present, but you know, always do your do your own research. Problem with crypto uh, is crypto is you know it's only been around what eleven years, really, uh, and really only mainstream ish the past I say three to five years, and um, and a lot and a lot of the bigger coins that are out now are, were only really invented in the last three years. So there's not a lot of track record with crypto, um, and unlike stocks, where you know you're you're investing in a company, an actual you know tangible company, and behind that company there's revenue, there's management, there's profits, uh, there's dividends, there's buybacks, whole lot of stuff that you can kind of value a company on. Can't redo really that with crypto, right? There's like there's like it's just like it's just a it's a currency. Um, but over the last like couple of years, there are starting so those things I talked about with stocks like revenue. Um, profits, uh, balance sheet stuff, that's called quote unquote fundamental or fundamental research. Um, and they're starting to, they're starting to, to become some, uh, um, some sort of fundamental research around crypto. And, and basically what that is, is there are, um, there are ways to, well, they're, they're, they're starting to become ways to measure uh, popularity, um, liquidity, um, how much a, a particular coin or how much a particular project behind a coin, how popular it is. Things like that. So there are starting to become quote unquote fundamental research for crypto. It's still really new, um, but it, but you know there there is something coming. One of the biggest ones that uh, that a lot of people in the crypto world use is called total value lock, or TVL, and um, we're going to go into that what that actually is in a minute. Uh, but just just you know if you want to write that down, just remember it, total value lock. The the abbreviation for it is TVL, and. Um, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, real quick, like total value locked is one of those things that some of you might be thinking, oh, this might be a technical one. It's something you need to know. Um, there are a lot of terms right now in cryptocurrency that are new to people, like swapping, um, staking, uh, a yield farming, and yield farming kind of you know relates directly back to TVL. But we're going to explain it. Don't get weird. Don't think, oh, this isn't for me. The whole reason why we do this is so we can bring some of these concepts and thoughts to the, to the masses, like maybe people who haven't heard of it yet. And if you have heard of it before, you want to listen because you're probably going to get a different spin on it um, listening with us. Yep. Yeah, so you bring up uh, first slide when you get a sec. Yep. Um, and yeah, so like I was saying, so total value lock is a way to, it's not a way to necessarily value it because, you know, like, like, with, like one of the most popular uh, kind of give a comparison. One of the most popular ways to value a stock is the P.E. ratio. If you don't know what that is, um, go back. If you're part of IA membership community, just go in, into IA TV and just search P.E. ratio. Uh, and um, if you're not, you can go to our YouTube channel and search P.E. ratio there as well. 
But PE ratio is the most popular way to value stocks, right? Um, that's one of the number one fundamental tools a lot of people use. Um, and like I said, there's really no way to value a cryptocurrency because again, it's a currency. The value of it is, is really just a market cap. Uh, so what we're looking for in crypto is for the quote unquote fundamental research are things kind of around crypto, the, the coin itself to see how popular it is, how, li how liquid it is, things like that. So this thing, this thing. Uh, so today we're trying this, uh, put up the slide and it's called, what it, it's called, what is TVL? What is Total Value Lock? Uh, and how, what does that say? The title at the top, <laughs> it's kind of covered by it. Yeah, yeah, what is TVL and how holding it can help you with your crypto investing? Right, yeah, so basically how, how can TVL help, how can TVL help you with crypto investing? Um, and we're gonna run through now. So on the slide, we have four bullet points we're gonna kind of go, up, go over. And then after this slide, we have another slide that's actually gonna show you a graphical uh, picture of what TVL is. So first, like we said, TVL stands for total value lock. And what it tells you is it tells you how, uh, how much money uh, is locked in it, for the term locked, how much money is actually locked into a cryptocurrency's underlying protocol, right? And on here, we, we have, uh, uh, we, we're talking about smart contracts we have listed here. That's getting a little wonky. So another way to think about it is just um, how much how much money is locked into a particular protocol. Example I'll use today is Compound, right? So there, there's a there's a protocol out here called Compound. The the uh, the the, um, the native currency with that or native cryptocurrency for Compound is also called Compound, right? And what the way Compound works is um, it's a way to like Brent said earlier, yield farming. It's a technical term for basically just earning interest on your crypto. Right, so what you can do with, with in, in the compound protocol is you can take your compound and deposit it on the compound protocol. And as it sits there, just think of it like a savings account, right? As it sits there, you can earn anywhere from, I've seen as low as 3% to upwards of like 10, 12%, just depending on the coin and how, how uh, popular the coin is. So- um, uh, And Leon, real quick, uh -huh. jump in with one point. When he mentioned, when yield, um, yield farming came in, just again, some of you all might be thinking along the way, like what do these things mean? Yield farming is just when people go out and they search for the best yield for whatever the crypto is. So it means pretty much just like if you were to say, I'm looking for a savings account with the best return. The only difference is because it's crypto, they're moving in and out of various investments to get to the best yield. So they're farming yields. They're looking for the best yield, the best return on their money. Yep. Yep. So, um, yeah, good point. So, uh, so yeah, so first bullet point is TVL, total value lock, just tells you how much money is locked into a particular cryptocurrency's protocol, the underlying technology below it. Um, so what does that tell you? The second point is the higher a protocol's TVL is, the more popular that protocol is, the more, uh, the more use it's getting, right? So the more money that's locked into a protocol, of course, shows you how popular that, how popular that uh, protocol is. If one protocol has, you know, 5 billion locked into their, into their protocol, another one has 10 billion, of course, the 10 billion one uh, is more popular, uh, is, is a more popular protocol. Um, next bullet point is the more uh, the more a protocol is being used, the higher the demand for that protocol's native currency. So the example I gave earlier was Compound, right? So the more money that's deposited in the Compound protocol, again, when you put it in Compound, you're taking like your Bitcoin, your Solana, whatever, put it in Compound, and you're earning interest on that um, on your cryptocurrency. So uh, the uh, the more um, uh, the more Money that the more the more cryptocurrencies that are deposited in Compound, um, the more popular that Compound cryptocurrency, online cryptocurrency is going to be. The reason is, is because um, anytime you put a you deposit cryptocurrency into a particular protocol, uh, you're going to so a lot of times there are fees that are associated with that, right? Um, and so a lot of times those fees are going to be paid in that native currency. So if you go to Compound, example, not saying it works like this, just giving an example. If you go to uh, deposit um, some cryptocurrency in Compound, and let's say there's a fee, right? Uh, that fee may be paid in Compound. So for, in order for you to pay that, you're going to need you're going to need Compound to pay that fee, right? Which means you're going to have to go out and get Compound to pay that fee, which increases the demand for the Compound. Another thing is that um, some of the interests, uh, depending on depending on the way it's set up and the way you deposit it, some of the interest paid on your cryptocurrency is also paid in Compound, in the Compound cryptocurrency. So the more crypto that goes on the Compound platform uh, drives up demand for the Compound native cryptocurrency, right? So again, TVL shows you how much um, how popular a, a particular uh, network is or, or protocol is. And um, the more popular it is, the, uh, the more demand is gonna be for that underlying uh, cryptocurrency of that of that uh, protocol. Last point it, is, it's, it really oh, there's no way for it not to be wonky, right? So it's 
It's yeah, like right. no way to smoothly explain it just yet, but it is, you know, go back and those that will listen to it, listen to that again because it's a cause and effect series that we just talked about. Um, it's complete cause and effect, and anybody can really understand cause and effect. So kind of move away from all the words for those of you all who might be having problems digesting it and just think about cause and effect. You know, the more this coin is used, the more popular it becomes and the more it's actually used by the native um, group. This, uh, you know, if it's staked being staked or if somebody's, you know, going into it because they're doing the whole farm yielding thing. Um, but it, then it drives up its total value lock and that, adds to its popularity on the blockchain. And so it's just, it's really just a series of cause and effect items here that we're talking about. So, you know, just to kind of give anybody a different way of thinking about it. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the TBL just tells you how popular it is. The more popular it is, the more demand for the underlying cryptocurrency, which is gonna, which, which theoretically will drop the value. The last point, we, like we said, Business 101 tells us that anytime there's an increased demand for any asset, that asset price usually rises. So if there's more, if a, if, a, if a particular cryptocurrency or a particular protocol has a high total value lock or TVL, uh, that's showing that it's popular, that's showing that a lot of people are using it, and that's going to drive, that, that theoretically is going to drive up the value of the native currency of that particular protocol. Um, so that's what TVL is. And, and the reason I'm bringing this up is, is because, you know, like right now, it's, it's like, you know, it's hard to do research on stocks. It's even harder to do research on cryptocurrency because, again, there's really no way to find any, any like, I guess, quote, unquote, fundamental data on cryptocurrencies. TBL is, is pretty popular in the, in the crypto world. You can just Google whatever coin that you want to look at. If you're looking at compound, just, just Google compound TBL, Bitcoin TBL, um, you know, Solana TBL, whatever you want, just or total value lock after after the name of the currency. And you should be able to find some information on um, the TBL. And the way the way you do this is compared is, is comparative analysis, right? So like I said, if compound has a TBL of five five billion and Solana has a TBL of 10 billion, well in the, in that in that comparison, Solana is a better investment because it's a more popular protocol. Uh, therefore, it's going to be typically it's going to be more demand for its underlying currency. So that's one that's one way. Not saying not, not saying it's the end all be all, but this is one way to kind of help you filter out some of the currencies uh, that you're looking at because I mean there are over twelve thousand cryptos out here now. So we need some kind of way to some kind of way to filter filter the. And also, if you're looking at that, what Leon just said was billion. That's one way that they measure the T um, TVL. Mainly, like it's three ways by and large <clears throat> that they measure it. It's going to either be USD, which is do US dollars, um, Bitcoin, or Ethereum. Those have you seen any other three? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, no, a lot of these, um, if you so if you if you're doing a Google search, you can find a site that shows TBL. A lot of times, like Brent said, you'll be able to change the uh, the 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 denomination of, of the currency, right? So, like Brent said, it may start off at USD, the US dollar. But if you want to see what uh, the TBL is and it, it, what it is in Ether, you can change it to that or you can change it to Bitcoin. Those are the big three. Um, but typically, most of them will default to the U.S. dollar. But, you know, if you want to see it differently, yeah, you can change. You can change it. Cool. Um, OK, so, Brent, if you can go to the next slide. Slide two. OK, so this is this is what TBL. This, so if you find a site that um, that, that will show you TBL, this typically would it would look like. And I'm going to relate this back to how, how this affects, how this can affect the cryptocurrency. So here we're looking at, we're effectively looking at three months, right? Let's say, let's just say July to September um, and, uh, or end of, end of June through the middle of September. Um, so we're looking at, you know, beginning at middle of June, it was about uh, the TBL for a compound was about $6 billion, right? Over the next three and a half months, that effectively doubled, right? It went from $6 billion to $12 billion. So the amount of money that was deposited on the compound network went from 6 billion to 12 billion in three months, right? So, I mean, that, that's a doubling in three months. Now, how does it affect us as investors? Well, the compound cryptocurrency in that same amount of time rose by 60%. So if you had bought compound in say the end of June and held it through the beginning of September, you'd have made 60% on your money. Um, and that kind of, that you know, it's not one for one, right? Because the, the amount of money deposited in compound doubled, but the, but the cryptocurrency underlying currency went up 60%. But it does show you that, you know, as TVL rises, Typically, you'll see the coin rise as well, because, again, the demand for that coin rises as the TVL does, too. So it's not one for one, but there is a correlation between TV, the movement of TVL, total value lock, and the, uh, the movement of the actual underlying cryptocurrency. Yeah, and as we stated earlier, if you look at the top where it says TVL USD, 
you can see how easily you can switch between understanding it in Ether or Bitcoin. And again, for those of you all who are just new to cryptocurrency, Ethereum isn't the actual coin itself. It's um, Ether, but it's a whole nother. Go back and listen to one of our old podcasts yeah. <laughs> if, you want, if you want the details of that. But it is complicated. Like some of these things are complicated. And, you know, wh why is this important? Because some people are getting point. 0.6% rate return in your banks for money is just sitting there. And if you have a savings account, honestly, at this point, you're losing. Um, you know, you just, Leon just showed an example of a coin that had a 60% rate return in, you said three months, right? Three, yeah, but yeah, say three months, yeah. 60% in three months. And even if we're wrong, let's say we're wrong by 10%, it's 50% in three months. If we're wrong <laughs> by 10%, at 0.06% interest on your savings account, which is the national average for savings accounts in the United States of America right now, you're talking about 15, like 1,500 years or 1,200 years, something like that, before your money to double. It's like 12 generations. So I, I don't know who think that's a good idea. When you're talking about a crypto, in this point, you know, crypto, we were fans of stock, crypto investing, real estate, like entrepreneurship, things that make sense better than the bank. This is, that's why this becomes important. And understanding total value lock, some of you all still are confused about, you know, how to figure out what's a good coin, what's not a good coin. This is a system you can use because it's theoretically it's going out and checking this one um, protocol's like popularity or that particular one's popularity in the market. Not end all be all, still do your research, but this is probably more than what some of you all knew before watching or listening to this podcast. So um, really just use the information. That's kind of what I'm boiling down to. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just, you know, use TBO, Total Value Lock, as a way to kind of filter out because like I said, there are over 12,000 coins out here. You know, if you're looking at, you know, five to 10 yourself, um, so you can use TBL, Total Value Lock, as a way to maybe filter that, filter that number down some to make a decision. Uh, because again, the as TBL rises, so does the demand for the coin, and theoretically, so will the price of the coin. Because as demand increases on an asset, it typically rises. And as I said here, TBL for compound went up 100% in three months, and the underlying cryptocurrency, the coin compound, went up 60% in three months. So there, like I said, there is a correlation between TBL and the and the uh, the appreciation or depreciation of of a coin. Um, it's not one for one, but you know it does show that there is a there is a pretty tight correlation. Yeah. So for everybody, if this seems like a lot, or you're like, you know what, this is very interesting, but I want to dig a little deeper. You can do the research yourself or you be, you can become an IEA crypto bull. Um, you know, the bulls platform is growing. And for any of you all who have been away for a while and aren't aware of the IEA crypto bulls, it's a group within Investing Education Academy that focuses solely on cryptocurrency. However, when you become an IA crypto bull, you do have access to our full portfolio, I mean, our full um, platform at the community level. So you do get access to information about stocks. You get some of our private events. Um, you get a lot comes with it, but primarily, again, it's focused on cryptocurrency and talking about things like this. So if you're not in it, you know, we'll see where it all lands. I wish, wish you the best. But this is definitely an area you want to pay very close attention to. Um, and I always liken it to this. If I were sitting around the table, you know, 200, 130, 40, 50 years ago, and somebody said, you know what, we should create a stock market. And everybody said, well, okay, maybe I'll do it, maybe I won't. The people that didn't, yeah. They, they literally destroyed years, generational money, wealth was destroyed in that one decision. And I'm again, I'm gonna say that generational wealth was destroyed in that one decision not to do it because it was either unfamiliar or it didn't feel comfortable or it was too much research to do. And this is second chance. So, you know, I'm not even saying with IEA, like again, Leon and I have always said, wherever you go, get good information, but get started because this ship is definitely not coming back to dock. So, um, yeah. Yeah, and, and just a last point on, on how legitimate and real crypto is becoming. 
Uh, Morgan Stanley, one of the largest banks in the United States, one of the largest banks on the planet, um, recently just launched a cryptocurrency division to do cryptocurrency research. So the same way, you know, these 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 um, these huge banks put out analyst reports about different stocks, earnings reports, things like that. They're now going to Morgan Stanley is one of I think JP Morgan either has started. Yeah, I think JP Morgan already has one. But Morgan Stanley has now just launched again. Morgan Stanley is one of the biggest, largest banks on the planet. Uh, and they just launched a uh, they just started a um, a cryptocurrency research desk, research arm that's not going to go out here and provide cryptocurrency research to their high net worth clients. So um, so, you know, if a Morgan Stanley that's sitting on hundreds of billions of dollars, maybe even close to a trillion, uh, they're taking this seriously. Uh, I think most of us should too. Brent and I, Brent and I definitely are. Yeah. Um, so that's what we're trying to bring this stuff to you all to kind of nudge people. Because I mean, we, we definitely get pushback from people that are still don't believe in crypto, um, which I get because, you know, it's, it's, it's brand new. There's just not a lot of information out here about it. That's what we're trying to kind of provide this to people. Because again, I, we just showed you an example of, a, of, a, of an asset that went up 60% in three months. Stock market That's not even the highest one that we know about. That no, no, not, 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 no, not even close. Now we have we know ones that have done hundreds, hundreds of percents in the same amount of time. But just that, comparatively speaking, the stock market does on average 10% per year. Now, um, with dividends, it can push about 12, 13% per year, which is a great return. But again, we're talking about something that did 60% in three months. And like Brent said, that's that do I mean we know ones that dwarf that by hundreds of percentage percentage points. Um, so so you know, take take this video, take total value lock, do your research. But it's definitely a good uh, a good tool to use when you're analyzing or you're doing your research on cryptocurrencies. Yep. So um, we are going to be putting our picks out. We know some of you all like give us the picks. You will find one of the picks inside of the IAA Investing Education Academy Facebook group. The other pick will be inside the IAA members platform. So you'll get one if you just go to our free Facebook group. You'll get the other once you join our paid community because we're trying to be good business people. <laughs> so, uh, with that being said, you know we this information truly like we joke and we smile and you know everything happens. This is going to be information that's going to change your generations. Um, you know, and I'll just give a very very quick story. My wife and I were talking recently, and you know just about accounts and what where what money was. And she didn't realize just how much we had in cryptocurrency. And I mean, she was kind of shocked that we had that much. But most of it was gains from the crypto. Now, when tax time rolls around, you know, we're going to see attorney Beverly Winstead. <laughs> but at the same time, it's unreal that you can get gains like this right now. Because everything else, when you look at institutional money and banking, is going the opposite way. They're going very conservative, low interest rates. And now, I mean, you have banks, DeFi banks popping up. It's it's an ecosystem you absolutely need to be part of because if it goes too far and you already think it's a lot, you'll probably never get into it and your family will suffer as a result of it. And that's not marketing. That's not the, you know, whatever. And I know the bill is in Senate that feels like it's going to hurt crypto. Crypto is not going anywhere. So... Yeah, we can have this conversation again next year when some of those people who believe cryptocurrency is going to go away with the Senate bill. Um, let's let's see where it lands. My money yeah, is I mean, on. But, yeah, and just the last point is like, this is the cryptocurrency, and I would tell you like, think cryptocurrency is like where the internet was in 1992, right? It's it's the, it's the beginning phases, first inning of, of this you know this long game. Yes, regulation is coming, but again, regulation is a good thing because once cryptocurrency actually is regulated. Uh, you're going to have a lot of the big money that's sitting on the sidelines right now come into the market. So that's why a lot of people are saying, oh, you know, Bitcoin's going to a million dollars. Well, who knows, right? It may or may not. But once all those trillions of dollars that are sitting on the sideline right now that are waiting for Congress to pass regulation that will basically give a safety net to uh, to big money. Oh, yeah. It's, I mean, it, it can, you know, because right now, a lot of this money that's in cryptocurrency. I mean, there is a lot of institutional money in crypto, but nowhere near the amount of money, the amount of money that's sitting on the sidelines. Yeah. So like I said, once these hundreds of trillions come into the market or trillion, no, tens of trillions come into the market, you know, we'll see crypto possibly because see crypto go, you know, literally go through the roof. So um, we really encourage everyone to get into the market ASAP if you can do your research. I mean, Brent and I, we, we, we're not like, I mean, Brent said we put, we, and I actually, Brent, just real quick. I, I didn't realize how big I, well, I did realize, that, but I was, I didn't realize, I, I, 
let me take a step back. I knew how much I had in crypto relative to my whole, whole account. But when I really looked at the number, I was like, wow, that's that's because I think crypto right now is 30 percent of my overall portfolio. And that's the top end. Like, I don't, I don't like to do any more than 30 percent of any one asset class um, or, or sector or anything. So I'm at the very, very top of where I want to be. But I'm cool with that. Right. Because the returns for crypto uh, on a percentage basis dwarf the stock market. So um, so in the, in the coins, I mean, I, I believe in, you know, they've, they've been really good to me. They're, they have on, uh, um, strong underlying uh, support. By the crypto community and a lot of businesses, so I'm totally comfortable with that. But um, but yeah, like Brent said, you, I mean, dip your toe in at least for five dollars. Throw five dollars at Bitcoin. Throw five dollars at Ethereum. And I mean, go back to the, the fact that there's some uh, there's there's platforms and coins that you can actually mine and get for free. And there yeah. are other coins. There, there, if you're an IA and you're part of the crypto bulls or in, um, crypto bulls, really, you'll know we're getting free crypto all the time. And I mean, very high quality coins um, and we're mining. So it's, you know, you can choose to, you can choose to watch or you can choose to get involved it, and it's totally your call. But in five years, it's going to be, you're going to know who got in and who didn't. And I put it that way. Yeah. Okay. And last point is like you said, for five years, because I kicked myself back in two, I, I was, I didn't really start to get into crypto really mentally. I always knew it was there. Till like 2017, right? Because I was big in the well, I was big in the futures contracts back then. And when the futures contract came out for Bitcoin, that's when my ears really went up. But I just wish, wish I had put money down, put money on, on Ethereum or Bitcoin back in 2017. I would be chilling. Um, so I look at it like that now. That you know, any any you know money I can get as far as uh, allocation wise, I'm at 30 percent now. Um, but, you know, I'll continue to, to, to incrementally go into crypto because like Brent said, I don't want to look back in three to five years and be like, damn, I wish, uh, you know, I wish I'd done this. I wish I'd done that. Like I wish I had done in 2017. So, I mean, look where Bitcoin was in 2017 and Ethereum in 2017 compared to where they are now. So, yeah, no, cool. So everybody, you know, again, if you want to join this conversation with at one of our masterminds with the IA Crypto Bulls, you can go to IEA Crypto Bulls, IEA Crypto with the see bulls.com and you know register we do it every first and third monday of the month great conversations actually great conversations and aside from that we have a group and in our group chat we're putting out free coins um coins to watch charts information movers i mean you name it just news it's all in there keeping us abreast of what's happening in the cryptocurrency marketplace because it's, it's a lot to deal with when you have life happening all around you. So um, everybody, you know, thank you again for being with us. We will put our picks. One, just go to our Facebook group, search Investing Education Academy on Facebook. Our group should pop up. If you're listening to the podcast, just whenever you get a chance, go over to Facebook, um, search our group. If you want both, you can go into the iamembers.com platform. And for our members, we're, we're listing the um, additional pick from today inside the platform. Everybody, thank you so much for being with us and we hope to see you next week.